Hello everybody! Today we're going to model a scorpion. Uh, this is actually going to be a series of videos in which I explain how to create um, polymorphic enemies, enemies that we can recombine later on into complex new enemies. And that will allow us to stretch our content much, much further uh, and also allow things like player-created enemy types. And that means that we're going to need to do this uh, in an unusual way. Now, if you have a problem with scorpions, you can skip ahead, but this is going to contain a lot of pretty good information, especially if you're a new modeling person, you're not, not used to modeling. We're going to start off by modeling something similar to this emperor scorpion here. Scorpions come in a lot of shapes and sizes, but the emperor scorpion is by far the easiest to model because the body shape is so basic. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this bullet-like shape in Blender, and uh, and that will be our core shape for our for our scorpion. We're not going to be creating any of the details of the face, and we're not going to be adding in the tail, leg, or um, claws in this episode. I don't think uh, if I model really fast, maybe. So here we are in Blender. Now, as a reminder, uh, this is for people who are a little bit new to modeling. So I'm going to be going over some of the details rather than just doing it flat out. Five switches between, uh, five on the numpad, switches between orthogonal and perspective. I'm going to be doing it in this, this in orthogonal because it allows me more control over grabbing. And uh, you can change your viewpoint like so, however you'd like. Shift C, not, Shift C puts your um, cursor at zero, 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 which is kind of important. So in order to model our scorpion, let's go ahead and start with a circle. Now this circle has way, way too many verts, so let's bring it down to 12, maybe? Yeah, 12 looks looks decent. Uh, and we're also going to want to have this radius be 0.5. There we go. So with that done, we can press tab to go into and edit the pieces. I'm in line select. I could be in face select or vert select. We want vert select. Rotate X 90 to bring it into the right alignment. And then we're going to delete half of it. And the reason is because we're going to add in a mirror modifier. Uh, and ad adding in a mirror modifier will allow us to see... Um, uh, yeah, mirror. Will allow us to see it on both sides, as you can see. So, mirror modifier added, but you can really damage this mesh with the default mirror modifier. So we're going to turn on clipping, and that means that we won't, won't be able to damage it. The basic body is bullet-shaped, so let's extrude and hit Z, no, no, not Z, Y, Y, to extrude out along the correct axis here. We're going to go ahead and make it two units long, and uh, and that will be the body. But you can see that the inside of the body is what got filled. Um, which side of the faces Blender chooses to fill uh, is largely random, so just select all of the lines and all the faces and hit flip direction and it'll work fine. Now, although I say that the scorpion is bullet-shaped, it's actually got uh, uh, a flatter top Rather than rather than being perfectly circular, so we're going to go ahead and bring these into alignment, just to give us a little bit of a um, a better scorpionish look. I'm actually going to drag these up uh, to here so that our scorpion's base is at zero zero zero. Now, if you do this, remember when you box select you won't automatically select through the entire mesh unless you hit Z, at which point you'll be able to select everything. There we are. So that's more or less the correct basic shape, and we can go back over into our view and see that. We don't have any end-on views of the Emperor Scorpion, but it's not particularly critical that we see it in that view. That one might be the Emperor Scorpion as well. But either way, this is more or less the correct shape for our Emperor Scorpion. So now all that's left to do is to break it into the proper bulleted shape, uh, and we might as well fill in this face here, just so that we have that blunt-nosed face that the Emperor Scorpion is known for. Yeah, that's what it's known for. <laughs> So we can scale here, but it scales towards the center of the verts, which means that it distorts because the center of the verts is not at the center of the, ma of the system. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to hit period, and that will make it scale towards your um, cursor, which is at 0, 0, 0. Now if we scale, the whole body scales towards the cursor. So let's just scale on the x-axis, and then independently on the y-axis, nope, z-axis.
like so. And now that ended up bringing it down, so let's go ahead and move it up. Uh, you can hit Control or Alt, depending on what you'd like. Control period brings it back to the center. And let's just put it here-ish. Why not? Uh, we're not looking for a perfectly straight body. Scorpions do not have perfectly straight bodies. They are raised in the back a little bit. So now let's cut, but let's cut up here. And why are we doing that? Because we can then drag this back. And you can see how by just cutting, uh, sliding, and then sliding, we can get a bullet shape without doing any more scaling routines. So that's roughly the bullet shape that the scorpion has. Uh, it is, however, a little bit more tapered along this part of the body. It's got it, the top taper is okay like this. Well, maybe maybe it needs to be a little bit more tapered. So let's just move this up a little bit, more like this, perhaps. Yeah, that looks more like it. It's okay if it's not perfect, because we are not building the Emperor Scorpion, we're just building a facsimile. So, let's cap off the tail. Alright, so what do we do to make this Emperor Scorpion look like an Emperor Scorpion? Well, the critical parts are mostly the legs and the claws and the tail, of course, but we're going to leave that off for now. For today, we're just going to create the body. If we look at the body of a scorpion, it's got, first off, it's got this head segment, but it's also got all of these spines. It's got spines, segments. The body is actually a segmented uh, object. It's not, it's not just a, a piece of tofu or a bagel, or not a bagel, a uh, crawler with, uh, with plates on it. It's actually a segmented body. It's just like the tail is. It's, the tail is segmented, so is the body. It's just less obvious. So what we're actually going to do is start to carve the body up into these segments. Now it's a little bit flabby to actually carve the body up into the segments. Um, we, we could save some time by faking the segments, but in this case I think it's okay. So this is going to be our head. And then this is going to be the first of the plates. But if we cut here and then we can scale in, you can see how scaling in will always screw up a little bit, but that's okay, because we're only scaling a small amount. And we've just created our first cut, uh, and this will be our first segment. The segments start off pretty sharp. Now, if you are thinking, ooh, isn't this wasteful? Yeah. There are definitely more efficient ways there are definitely more efficient ways to model this using normal maps, uh, but this is, I, I, am, I am of the opinion that most people, uh, especially people on my channel, uh, are probably want to see the uh, most easy and reliable way to do something and still have it work. Uh, so what we're doing now is we're just modeling it in, in an easy and reliable way, even though it does create a little bit of flab. These, these, these monsters will have a slightly higher vertex count than, um, than, a properly mod, than a properly modeled version, but I think that's okay. So this is a little bit too small, so let's extend it. We could shrink it a little bit if we need to. And now here we are at the last segment. Now, the last segment is actually going to be a little bit iffy. We're going to have to think about that a little bit more later on. But for now, this works. But the problem with this body is, of course, that now it's got these ribs all the way around, and that doesn't look right at all. If we look at the scorpion, it doesn't have... Uh, it has obvious... Uh, what is it? Dorsal? Back plating. Uh, whereas the underside is banded, but it's not plated. So what we need to do is we need to create these ridges and create the good plating across the top. And that's pretty easy. We just go into face select mode and we select some faces. And we can just extrude them out. Now you have to be careful. As you can see, in face select mode, things screw up. So when we are extruding, we don't generally want to be in face select mode. There. Perfect. Perfect. 
And you might think that's a little bit too much extrusion or not, not quite enough extrusion or whatever. You can do this however you would like. There is absolutely no rule that says you have to do it exactly like I do it. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to switch back into face select mode. It's my opinion that you should really learn how scaling works for each of these modes. In face select mode, for example, when we scale, they do not scale towards each other. They scale independently. You can see that. Now they do skew rather badly, but they won't skew very badly if we only scale on one axis. So if we only scale on the y-axis, we can have them shrink just on the y-axis. And that's good because we can make them a little bit smaller on the y-axis to give it a sense that it is a, um, uh, that they are plates rather than just being you know, sharp ridges. We're going to move these in just a little bit, and that'll give it a little bit of a sense of volume. There we go. Now, the head is also a, um, an expanded area, but we're not going to worry about the head today. We're only going to be doing the body. And if we take a look at our scorpion, uh, I tried to rotate this with middle click as if that would help at all. Um, this is not a 3D model, so I can't rotate it. What we can see here is that we have an area up front where all of these legs and stuff attach. So in the back, the body is pretty well bisected by plating, but as we get towards the front, it becomes this mass of joints. Uh, and the plates actually rise up a little bit and we get this kind of scooped look. So how in the world do we model that? Well, there's lots of ways, of course. But I think that the easiest way is to press tab to go back into object mode and then switch over into sculpt mode. And I think that people could use sculpt mode a lot more and they don't. So if you use grab, you can scale your brush up however high you'd like it to be, like so. Or you can scale in and out because your actual scale here is affected by your brush. So whatever is easiest for you. And then we can just grab these things and drag them up. See? And if you want to drag straight up, I don't think there's a way to do that, but that's okay. So that, that doesn't seem like it's quite a big enough brush. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Uh, again, I don't think that's quite big enough. Zoom out a little bit. That's like what I want. There you go. Okay, so there. We have just gone ahead and created the swell at the front of the body. Now, if you don't want the swell to have, uh, uh, the, the, if you don't want this part to be swelled, uh, the swelling is actually fairly small um, up at the top. So what we've done is we've created uh, quite a swell here, whereas in most scorpions that swell is not as significant. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want that swell. I'm actually going to enhance that swell because I want my scorpion to have a swell there. I want it to look like it's got shoulders. There we go. So that is the body of the scorpion. But you know what we're missing? We're missing, well, we're missing a lot, but we're missing texturing. Um, it's going to be very difficult to get a feel for how the scorpion will look without a texture to applied to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly UV map this uh, so that we can just slap a texture on it and see what it looks like in the game world. Now obviously uh, in the long run you would want to UV map something with a lot more care, but for our case what we need to do is we just need to get a couple of these basics and mark the seams. And of course there's a seam running all along the side here, but it's almost impossible to select because we have uh, made those into poles. So rather than trying to select a seam across the front here. It's, uh, well, I guess we do need that seam, so let's just go ahead and do it manually. Um, the easiest way to do it is to use box select, like this. Just be careful, because if you are in this mode, you will pick up a lot of extra lines, and you don't need them. So uh, when you're using box select, you're probably going to have to do some cleanup. And the cleanup is pretty straightforward. We can just Oop. and we can mark that seam, mark this seam. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to mark in between every single one of these joints. Now, 
Now, as I've mentioned, this is a super, super basic way to do UV mapping, and it does not produce an ideal UV map. It just produces a UV map that's good for us at the moment. Select everything, unwrap it, and you can see that it splits up like this. So we're just going to save that, and then I think I've already put it into our game world here. There it is. So I've just slapped the boot material onto it. Um, I haven't actually built a scorpion material. But you can see that we have a little bit of jointing. Uh, what I've done is, here in Blender, you can adjust how the, uh, uh, how the normal maps get imported. Uh, and I've switched them over to Calculate. But the Calculate at 60 means that we get a couple of small creases. So let's increase this to 75. And that should... Oop. Why did that make it even more... Tri I screwed that up. Try that again. There's something wrong with how this is being imported, I think, because that should not be a sharp angle. Um, the idea that that is somehow more than 90 degrees is hilarious. But since that's the face, we're going to go ahead and just take a look here and see what's going on. Uh, it looks like the way that it's breaking it up into triangles is making it confused about what should and shouldn't be jointed. Well, that's okay. We'll deal with that later. Uh, for now, the important part is that this is how it sort of looks. Now, I don't have any decent material for it, so let's go ahead and create a material for it. Create material, and we'll call this Scorpion. Now, we don't have a decent texture for it, but we can just go ahead and choose a texture that has vaguely scorpion-like properties. How about the sword icon? I don't know where... Oh yeah, that's the sword icon. That's actually really low low res. Uh, I'll need to have something a lot more high res than that. Um, uh, I guess this is probably the best choice. That's also, that's also pretty low res as I remember. Anyhow, we'll make it into a, a specular map. Like so. And then we'll drop it in. And this way we can adjust the, the shininess without it affecting anything else. And we can see that uh, the shininess here is not very punched up. So we can radically increase the shininess of the specular color and adjust this. And we'll go for that nice sharp look that we had. Uh, but it's pretty clear that the default specular look is never going to have as good an appearance as these shines have. Um, the good news is that I actually do have a material that will work quite well with this. And instead of using the specular map, what we'll use is our um, Shader Forge spec map. Here we are. And we can drop stuff into this a lot more aggressively. So let's choose our specular power. And let's choose our uh, diffuse normal. Uh, we can increase our gloss. So you can start to see how this would produce something that's uh, a little bit more interesting. Um, hmm. I forgot I had so many options here. And we can give the specular map just a hint of green, just to make it seem a little bit more poisonous. And there's a lot of things that we can do here. Um, to adjust how it works and how it looks, but you can see that this material gives us a lot more control over exactly how it looks and how shiny it looks. If we change the specular map, ah, there we are, that's better, that's much better. We can change the specular, um, the gloss down some. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. And you can see that uh, these look like they're properly shiny. And if we look back at the way that it looks, see? The only problem right now is that our normals are screwed up, and I'll, I'll work on that off screen sometime. Um, we'll try and figure out why the, why the normals are, uh, are refusing to calculate properly. But for now, let's go ahead and bring it back down to 65. And yeah, that's going to need some work. We're going to have to actually create a texture for it and do all sorts of fun stuff. But you can see how this 
is starting to become something that looks quite dangerous and poisonous, even though there's nothing attached to it yet. Um, one of the issues that we have is that these chitinous edges are really, really, really sharp. Uh, if we wanted to make them look a little bit better, what we could do is we could cut here, and then scale up a little bit. Um, we would want to scale up as verts here. Uh, so there's lots of there's lots of ways that we can adjust this to try and make it a little bit better. I think I cut wrong. Cut here and then move it up. There we are. And then we can just scale it a little bit. Like oop. Um. Oh, I just want to scale on the z-axis. That's uh, the y-axis. That's what I'm thinking. It's like why? Why can't I remember what I was going to do here? So what I've done is I've cut and I've moved up towards the top, so that we're very, very close to the top. And then I scale on the y-axis just a little bit. Now, as I mentioned, this is just a fast and furious way to do this modeling. Uh, there are more efficient ways and more effective ways to do it. But for now, that will work. We'll go back into Unity and see how that looks. Ah, there we are. That looks more like what I want it to look like. We can also make this look a lot better by adding in some more cuts. Um, so these guys that we just created, if we select them all, and then mark them. Then we can select everything and we can unwrap again. Now go back into Unity and... Now luck wasn't on our side with the unwrap, but uh, the idea is that now these insides can be a different color than the tops, and that will allow us to create uh, more textures that are easy to use. In the long run, what we'll do is each of these segments will have the exact same UV map, as each other segment, so uh, they'll all share the same high quality uh, UV area. Anyhow, that should do for our initial modeling. I'm not going to be releasing this because we haven't gotten far enough yet, but I will be releasing the blend file uh, when we're done with the rest. The next, ses ses the next session will be us creating legs and tails and stuff.